Helen Hart Smith here from the Heart of the Witch's Path YouTube channel. Hope you guys had a great weekend. It's Monday again, and that means it's time for this week's video response to the 2016 Pagan Challenge for the YouTube. Ho, ho, ho. We're on week 13 already, lucky number 13. I have my notes here down at my side. Oh, and I can see... I apologize. I took a sip of water just before I started uh, recording, and I see that apparently all of it didn't make it past my lips. Sorry, guys. <laughs> We're a hot mess sometimes here at the Heart of the Witch's Path, and sometimes you just got to roll with it. So anyhow, I've got my notes here. We are um, on week 13 of the YouTube Pagan Challenge, and this week's question is, do you use divination? And if so, what do you use? Uh, this is a good, another good question. Um, I think it's uh, a really interesting way to see what people are doing, see what's out there, and see what's popular. I think that um, it'll be interesting to kind of touch base with everyone. And um, I'm sure that there's things like tarot that a lot of people use, but I'm interested to see what uh, how outside of the box people get. So what I did for this video, just to kind of keep things organized, is I'm kind of breaking things into three categories, just because I think that this is kind of a good way to help me organize my thoughts. So the first category is what do I use most often when it comes to divination? I did do a blog post last year about my top five divination, and it hasn't really changed since then. So I'm going to kind of go over it a little bit, and you'll I'll link the uh, actual blog post in the description box below, and you'll be able to kind of go check out things a little bit uh, more in depth there. So let's just kind of get into those Five. So the fifth method of divina divination that I from my blog post is I like to use a pendulum. And this is probably what I use the least, um, but I have used it in the past and had some really good results with it. I made sure to kind of gather things uh, around so that I could, you know, show uh, what I use during the video. So I'm going to kind of jump in. I have this really cool board that um, my friend Crystal made for me. Uh, super cool project. They sell wood pieces like this uh, at your local craft stores. And this is just something that has like a really cool beveled edge. And I don't know for sure if that's what she did, but I know I've seen things like this. So if you wanted to replicate something like this, you could totally do it for yourself. Now she wood burned the, uh, the answers that you would use your pendulum for. But if you were artistic and wanted to paint something, I'm sure you could do that. I'm sure you could even use markers. And then she also, it looks like she uh, stained it because it's not, you know, it's a, it's a darker wood finish. So um, I charged my pendulum and I'm unable to find it right now. I charged it at the last full moon and apparently it didn't make it back to its home where it should have. So uh, you can use stone pendulums, which you can find in most new age stores, witchy stores, whatever. But I've also used in the past just a necklace. And a lot of times I use my pentacle you know, I'll take it off. You know, it's on a it's on a chain that makes a perfect string uh, for dangling. And you can use this to ask your questions and watch for the answer. So you, you don't necessarily have to invest in a pendulum if you don't want to. Not if you have necklaces. So that's kind of a there's a little witchy penny saving for you if, you, if you're interested. Um, the next uh, divination that I use quite often is what's known as four penny divination. And this is actually something that I, t I carry with me in my purse. So I have it with me all the time. So if I have a need for a quick divination answer, I've got something with me. So I carry it in this cute little box that was gifted to me by a friend years ago. And this is a pill box. Box. So um, it's made out of wood and you slide this open and this is a super easy divination. It's four pennies. 
It's literally four pennies, four penny divination. Um, and what I did when I decided to, to use this form of divination is I actually located four pennies from that were minted in my birth year and because I wanted to have some kind of a personal connection and I figured that that was the best uh, the best method for me was to find um, ones that were minted in my birth year. And I found out about this divination. This is an old school hoodoo practice as far as I know. And I found out about it from this book that I purchased at Convocation a few years ago from Jackie Smith. Jackie is our candle lady that we've talked about numerous times here on the channel. And this is a book that she threw together that's hoodoo basics. What it is and how do you use it. And so the there's a lot of really great information in here if you're a hoodoo practitioner or looking to become a hoodoo practitioner or just want to learn something more about hoodoo in general. This was a this is a great uh, a great reference tool. And I don't, unfortunately, I don't know if this is available still. Jackie does have a couple of books out now that, you know, these are obviously self-printed um, and things of that nature, but there's a lot of good information and she talks about Four Penny Divination in there. So you could probably contact her at Coventry Creations um, and I'll go ahead and link the website down there. Um, if you're interested in something like this, it's a really, it's less than 100 pages and there's a lot of good information information. Maybe if it's not available and enough people inquire about it, um, she might consider a, another run or something. Um, but it's good information. So there you have it. Um, the other form of divination that I use a lot is the Ogham sticks. And these, uh, I'm considering maybe making my own set, but this is a set that I purchased. And there's a book that comes along with it that I've talked about before. Things are falling again. Told you. Hot mess. Uh, but the Agam is the Celtic uh, alphabet, for lack of a you know a better understanding. They didn't necessarily write with it. Uh, but these are named after uh, the trees. And so here's a few of them. And so um, this is a form of divination that you can use by pulling them and dropping. I don't... Um, I I've infrequently used them for full readings, but more frequently used them during ritual. Uh, if we have a divination time, if someone has a message that they need to get, or if they have a question, you can do a one stick uh, and drop draw. And so that's what I've used it for the most. Uh, but I like it. It's, um, of course, I have a, a big connection to the Celtic Pantheon. And so since that's from the same area, uh, that's that was part of the draw initially. And I, I just kind of like it. So that's what I use it for. Um, the next thing I use is runes. And I happen to have here a set of runes that I made. Um, my Kathy's had a tree that uh, fell in her yard, not this past winter, but the winter before. And so she saved a few of the um, limbs and she had her husband slice them. And so we were able to each make a set of runes. Plus we were able to do some other bind rune spell work with these. And I believe that they're maple. Um, and so uh, we just drew the runes on there and I purchased a wood burner, which is like an awesome witchy tool. Uh, so I was able to burn the runes in here and uh, yeah, I sanded them a little bit too to kind of get rid of some of the sharpness and stuff like that. But uh, that's kind of nice. And I've got this cute little birch, uh, birch bark bowl that I keep them in. So this isn't the set that I use um, daily for myself. This is something that I would might I might do readings for someone else. And the reason that I wanted that separate kind of set is because the personal set that I use every day, I make offerings to it. And therefore, you know, it has my bodily stuff on it. So I keep it just for my own personal use. That way we're not spreading anything. So there you have it. Um, the fifth form of divination that I use the most is, uh, uh, tarot. I have numerous tarot decks. Here's one of them. Um, this is the, the goddess tarot by, uh, Chris Walter. Um, and this is one of my, 
one of my decks that I use a great deal. Um, this is a box that I keep it in that my friend's dad made before he passed away. So it has special meaning for me. Um, so I mean, tarot, I think a lot of us, like I said, know about tarot in some capacity. So I'm not going to talk too much about that. But uh, so those are the five divination forms that I use most often. Now, the next category that I'm uh, I wanted to talk about are ones that I've used a little bit. So I have some working knowledge of them, but I wouldn't consider myself in any way massively connected to it or whatever. So, uh, Astrology, I think we've all at some point read our horoscope or had our birth chart done, things of that nature. I know a little bit about it, and through my classwork this year with the Temple of Witchcraft, I'm learning more. So uh, it's something that, you know, it's kind of I'm gaining knowledge on, and so that's a good thing. Um, I'm also gaining knowledge on arithmancy, which is using numbers and assigning, assigning number values to things and looking at patterns in that way. Uh, again, this is something that I'm learning more about or have learned about um, in my studies this year. And so that's, it's interesting. It's, it's probably not anything that I'm going to massively learn about or use in the future, uh, but it's, it's interesting to have a working knowledge of it. So, um, and then the other thing that I've used kind of infrequently is by gazing into a candle flame. Uh, there's been different homework assignments and spells that require looking into candle flames, but it's not something that I do a great deal. I've done it a little bit. So dipped my fingers, so to speak. <laughs> um, and then there's the last section that I thought I'd talk about are things that I'd like to learn more about. And um, so I have three things, palmistry being one of them, tea leaf reading being another, and scrying being the last one. So um, if anyone knows of any good books on any of those three or... Uh, videos or or whatever I'm kind of looking for some more information so that's it I guess I kind of went through that a lot quicker than I, or a lot quicker than I anticipated but that is my video response for the week three or week 13 question for the 2016 YouTube pagan challenge if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and if you haven't done so already please subscribe and I'd love to hear some feedback from you so until next time thanks for walking a little while with me and blessed be